What do you get when you combine Steven Spielberg, Native American burial grounds, clowns, and real human remains? You get the curse of the poltergeist. The Poltergeist is a classic horror film directed by Toby Hooper in 1982. The synopsis of the film is as follows. Strange and creepy happenings beset an average California family known as the Freelings. Steve, Diane, Dana, Robbie, and the youngest of them all, Carol Ann. When ghosts commune with them through the television set, initially friendly and playful, the spirits turn unexpectedly menacing. And when Carol Ann goes missing, Steve and Diane turn to a parapsychologist and eventually an exorcist for help. And although not directed by, Steven Spielberg is a credited writer and producer, so the success of this film was almost inevitable. But sometimes success comes with a price. Let's take a look at some of the unfortunate events linked to the production of this film franchise, and I feel it's important to preface that. This video intends no disrespect to the real unfortunate events that affected so many real people. However, the misfortune does beg a deeper look into the movie's reputation. The Poltergeist series is attributed to the deaths of at least four members from the film's production team. Um, Heather O'Rourke you saw in Poltergeist. They're here. I bet you hear that a lot, don't you? Mm -hmm. They uh, People ask you to say that a lot. Yeah, a lot. They're here, so I won't ask you to say it, okay? Unless you really want to say it. One of the more notable unfortunates came to Heather O'Rourke, who played young Carol Ann Freeling. Heather was a bright-eyed, blonde six-year-old when she filmed this movie, and it was only six years later that she met her untimely end. I was eating lunch with my mom in the commissary, and Stephen, he kept on waving at me, and after lunch, she came over and um, asked my mom if I was doing anything, and my mom goes, no. So, um, he made me do an interview for the Poltergeist movie. Leading up to her passing, she fell ill and was misdiagnosed with Crohn's disease. In the following year, after falling ill once again, her sickness was written off as a flu due to her symptoms. She died the following day at the age of 12. It turns out she didn't have Crohn's disease. She had a separate underlying issue in her intestines that sent her into cardiac arrest and she was gone the following day. Who are you? No, uh-uh, I don't remember. The beautiful child star of such movies as Poltergeist has died. That cute little girl with the long platinum hair was very familiar to movie audiences, but we want to tell you more about little Heather O'Rourke. This 12-year-old was born and raised in our area, and that's also where she has died after suddenly being hospitalized. Next came Dominique Dunn, who played the character of Dana Freeling in the year of 1982, the same in which the poltergeist was released. She divorced from her husband, John Sweeney. Later that year, in November, he showed up to her house begging for her to take him back. When she rejected him, Mr. Sweeney hastily grabbed her by the neck and choked her until she was unconscious. He then left her there to die alone in the driveway of her Hollywood home to be sitting four feet away from the man who killed your daughter, who was all dressed up like a priest and read the Bible. I mean, it, was, it made me enraged at the show business thing that justice has uh, become, you know, dressing somebody up in a part, and I hated him. I just hated him. Then came Julian Beck, who played the evil pastor in the second film. His death came after a diagnosis of stomach cancer a diagnosis that everyone dreads. Another death attributed to the curse is that of Will Sampson, who played a Native American shaman. But his death came during a heart-lung transplant, which already had a very slim chance of success. Given the situation, it is easy to, to link general misfortune to the curse of being associated with this film. But I ask at what point do we stop attributing the natural yet very dreadful events that naturally take place? If the natural world will inevitably bring death and very dark times for people, why is it so easy for these events to be linked back to the poltergeist? Why would the film have actually been cursed? One theory is that the kind of film you choose to create 
can manifest itself. And even when calling upon the unnatural forces for the sake of entertainment, you could be making a call to something without even knowing. It was a big mistake acknowledging this doll. And through that, the inhuman spirit tricked you. You gave it permission to infest your lives. Another very popular claim comes from actress Jo Beth Williams, who in an interview claimed that the skeletons in the film were real. She says that, at the time, prop skeletons of a decent quality were far too expensive, and so it was actually more cost effective to just buy the real deal. If this sounds familiar, this is very similar to the claim about the skeletons in the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland that were supposedly donated by the UCLA Medical Center. But that's a story for a different episode. In another instance of bad luck being attributed to the poltergeist curse, Richard Lawson, who played Ryan, was aboard the US Air Flight 405 when it crashed into Flushing Bay in March of 1992. I knew the plane was gonna crash. I'm trapped underwater in my seat. A total of 27 people out of the 51 on board were killed. Lawson survived, but the event is yet another reason the movie was a bad omen to its cast and crew. The plane took off and it just rolled immediately to the side. I saw this big flash out orange on the buildings over there. It had struck something and then it went to flames and then it tumbled and wound up in the bay. And finally, in 2009, a second cast member was murdered, Lou Perryman, who played a small role in his portrayal of Pugsley in the original film. He was 67 years old when a recently released ex-convict entered his home and butchered him with an axe. Now with all this in mind, I ask you, do you think the poltergeist was cursed? Let me know in the comments section why or why not. And that's all for now. See you next time on Behind the Screams.